it was really fun, and I did, like, what was my favorite drink, where do you think I was born, um, and I'm going to reveal the answers, like, show the poll results tomorrow, or maybe tonight after um, we get finished, but it's really, it's hysterical, the things that you, like, are so firm that you guys know about me, I guess because I talk about it a lot, and then the things that you, like, didn't know, so I think I'm going to keep doing that, so if you did that, oh, Lauren, you said they were so fun. Um, I thought they were so fun too, and it's so funny, there's only 17 of you, so it's so funny that you guys thought I was actually born in Texas. I was, I lived there as a kid, but I was born in Nashville. So, um, so just for the 18 of you that are in here, if you answered that and you thought I was from Texas, I'm actually from Nashville. Um, I love polls too, Carrie. They're so fun. They are so fun. Um, hi, Ashley. Hi, Mia. Jackie, you got it right. You knew I was from Nashville. You said Texas, Carrie. Um, I think once you've lived in Texas, you're just like Texas through and through. So that's okay. That's all right. If you missed it, that's fine. I'm, I bet you got my favorite drink right, though. Hi, Chrissy. Um, okay, so it's seven. I would love to get started on this fourth week of uh, discerning the voice of God. And a few weeks ago, we were talking about, you know, being committed to obedience. And I would love to know this week, if you have time, if you could just message me and let me know, like, how is this uh, walk with God. How is it going? How is your your obedience to Him going? Is it harder than you thought? Is it um, easier than you thought now that you're like submerging yourself into the Word more? Um, I would love to know. So if you would just message me and just let me know if there's anything that I can pray for you. I love interacting with you guys. Um, and it really encourages me that this is something that you all enjoy me doing and it's not a waste of my time. And for those of you that do message me and tell me how much you appreciate me doing this and doing the podcast, that means a lot to me because I don't really need validation from people, but it helps to know that people are actually hearing what God is wanting me to say. So um, if you could just let me know during this week if there's something I can pray for you for or um, just send me a little message. Just send me a little message. Let me know if there's any encouragement I can give you. Um, let's just do that this week. That's that's a little thing I want you guys to help me with this week. So week four, um, discerning the voice of God. If you're new here, we are doing a seven-week, sorry, that's bright, seven-week study on discerning the voice of God. So how to better hear what God is trying to tell us, right? Um, because that can be really hard, can be really frustrating, um, but it gets easier. Once you apply all these tools that that Priscilla has given us in this book, it's, um, it's a lot easier. So, um, The Voice of God Week 4, this was titled Reflective of His Heart. So, we are going to... Um, I finished this today, so it's kind of fresh on my mind. Typically, I finish it last Thursday or Friday, and I have the weekend just to kind of relax and, um, you know, just have everything prepared, really. But this week was crazy busy. I've had a lot going on, so I finished it today. Um, but day one was titled, He is Our Prize. Have you read She's Still There? No, I have not read that, but I will add that to my reading list, Carrie. Thank you for that um, recommendation. So, um, hi, Chrissy. So day one is titled, He is Our Prize. And isn't that so true? Um, and it's something that I have really just um, embraced that people are going to fail us. Um, they're going to promise things and they're going to change their minds and they're going to be just all like this, right? But what is always there? What is always um, just 
just right there, never changing, and that's God. So he really is the ultimate prize, okay? He really is um, what we should putting our most effort towards, not relationships, not um, or human interactive relationships, um, not our jobs, not how much money we, we can have, not how many things we can consume, but what's really important, okay? And, and that's my main message today, I think, is that God is our prize. So why are we putting so much effort towards and thoughts and energy and emotions toward all these other things um, when we should be putting them towards God, okay? So when we put ourselves and our own ambitions above God, um, we're not going to hear what he's trying to tell us, right? He, we're not going to hear it correctly. Um, we could be hearing our own ego and we could be hearing um, the enemy because he's very slick and we're going to learn about that too this week. So if you have your book, turn to page 105. I'm going to read to you um, a little part out of it if I can get to the page. I want to read this part to you that's on 105 at the top, okay? Hi, everybody. Glad you guys could join. Um, so listen, he is the prize. Not his direction, guidance, and clarity. Not even his comfort, his relief, or his encouragement. Just him. He is the one who encompasses all you are searching for. All those answers that you are wanting from him, um, they're not the prize. The prize is he himself, okay? He is our prize, okay? So just let that kind of sink in for a second as I continue reading. So it's a mutual agreement when God speaks. Um, his chief aim is to reveal himself. His, he desires to make himself known and lead you into more an intimate relationship with him. If you overlook this main objective, listen very carefully. If you overlook this main objective in search of a more self-focused ambition, um, even the honorable ones, you will not only be able to, um, you will not be able to clearly discern his leading. So even if you're trying to figure something out and it's from um, a good place, but it has your ego behind it and your pride behind it, um, you're not going to be able to hear him correctly. Okay. So um, I'm going to read you two verses. And um, it's John 16, 14 is the first one. It says, it tells us the goal of the Holy Spirit is to glorify Jesus. Okay? And then in John 17, 4, we learn that um, Jesus is aiming to glorify God. So we have this circle, right? We have that Holy Trinity that we always talk about. Um, so basically, each works together but are one and the same. Okay, does that kind of make sense? I hope that for people that are kind of new to this, they understand that it's all coming from the same place and that's of God. Um, so the main goal of each is to glorify one another. When we start to make that our main goal, okay, when we start to make that our main goal, um, we will be aligned with God's purpose and be able to hear his voice. So turn to page 107. I want to read you a couple of things um, that I think are really important. Okay, so out of the book, if you have your book, turn to page 107. Um, it's easy to start seeking God's direction. Pay attention to that word, direction. It's easy to start seeking God's direction more than just seeking to know God himself. Seeking to know, I found myself doing this, and I've looked back, and I have um, began to understand that I was putting my focus on the direction of God, because obviously we need that direction to make decisions in our daily life, but really, I need to trust that everything is going to work out. Every He's got all my steps aligned if I'm listening to Him correctly, Okay. Um, and really just focus on who he is. So instead of seeking his direction, I just need to seek him. Okay? Not the answers he can give me, but really just him. Because it's not about what comes after I get the answer. It's about him. Right? He is our prize. So this costly trade-off is more clearly seen when we frantically try to solve our problems while neglecting the opportunity these problems provide us to simply be in his presence. So he's, 
he's going to give you the fruit of adversity and, and um, we'll even say conflict, just so that um, we can find him through that situation. Does that make sense? He's giving us an opportunity to not focus on what's in front of us, okay? The steps we need to take. He's giving us an opportunity to seek him, who he is, in that situation. So I want you to just really think about that. Think about, um, keep that, that phrase that he is the prize throughout your week, okay? Because it's really going to bless you when you stop trying to seek answers and seek him. Okay, um, we must constantly maintain the far superior privilege of knowing God over merely getting something from Him or in, impl- implementing an action plan. So, this is hard because I'm an answers driven person. I want to know what's going to happen. I want to. It's it's part of being, um, you know, wanting to be in control, right? Um, but really, God has taught me over these past few weeks and few months that it's not about what's going to happen next. It's not about who's going to leave, who's going to stay, what job I'm going to have, how much money I'm going to have. It's really just about getting to know God on such an intimate level. you know. And then He's going to bring the people I need and then they're going to stay. And then He's going to provide me with the job that I need, the opportunities that I need, the people that I need to make his plan. If I'm truly seeking who he is and, and, and running after this relationship with him, um, he's going to provide everything we could ever need. People, opportunity, relationships. It's called having favor upon us because we have entrusted our lives to him. Okay, We've given ourselves over as a living sacrifice to him. Um, And it says in the middle of page 107, don't bypass the relationship, okay? I want you to really listen to this, highlight it, write it down in your phone notes. I want you to dwell on it this week, okay? I want you to listen to what I'm saying. Don't bypass the relationship because because you'd rather have answers to your questions, okay? Because probably five even five months, we'll say five months down the road, the answers that you're wanting may not even matter. May not even matter. They may, but they may not even matter. So so everything around us is always changing. Everything. People are changing. Situations are changing. Our environment's changing. Our, our everything is changing. But why wouldn't you want to Focus and put all of your energy towards something that is never changing. Something that you know is good through and through. The truth is good through and through. Not changing. Never changing. Why wouldn't you want to put all of your energy and focus into the prize? The real prize. The thing that is never going to leave you. Never going to forsake you. Never going to... Um, lead you astray, never going to cause any kind of deception, anything. Why wouldn't you want to put your mind and your focus into that versus the answer that you may be wanting to something that really isn't going to matter down the road, okay? So don't bypass the relationship because you'd rather have the answer. Um, So much peace in that. Yes, I have found great peace in that. I hope you do too. Hi, Lauren. Um, Hi, Melissa. Hi, Emily. Um... He wants to reveal truth about himself to you because this knowledge will lay the firm path towards fulfilling his purpose for your life, okay? Since his goal, okay, his goal, um, making it your, since this is his goal, making it your goal is the key in differentiating his leading from the leading of others. Okay, I want to read you Exodus 34, um, 6 through 7 in a verse in Malachi. Um, But if you're in the process of waiting on God for a clear direction, there's something about himself that he is revealing to you in the meantime. Um, Don't ignore it. Just ask him to reveal it. So if you have been asking him to reveal himself to you, he will. If you have been asking for an answer and a a direction, it's more than likely an opportunity. um, 
Hi there, Blake. It's more than likely an opportunity that he's giving you to find out more about him, to have more faith in him, okay? And and it's it's amazing that once you change your focus around and your priority around to it just being about him, all the other stuff just finds a way to work itself out. You don't even have to do anything, okay? So I hope that gives you a little bit of peace this week that if you're trying to find all these answers and running around scrambling in your brain trying to figure it all out, just let it go. Let it go. Put your faith in God. Turn your focus around, and he's going to give you the peace, the answers, everything that you need, but you have to be willing to just let it go. Okay, just let it all go. Um, so Exodus 34, 6 through 7 says, And he passed in front of Moses proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Listen to these adjectives of, of God himself, okay? Slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. Really listen to that verse. Now in Malachi six or 3, 6 through 7, it says, I, the Lord, do not change. He's never changing, okay? He's never changing. Everything around you can be changing. Everybody around you can be changing, but he is never changing, okay? I, the Lord, do not change. So you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. So if you have found yourself turning away from God, I encourage you, turn back to him. Don't, don't think that you're too far gone from him, that he's not listening to you anymore. He's never changing. He's always going to love you, always going to provide for you if you just rely on him, okay? I want to read you um, a couple of things on 108 and 109. Let's see. Um, so I have almost finished up Isaiah and I'm really excited to share what I have learned through Isaiah. Um, but let's talk about Israel for a second on page 108. In Israel's stubbornness, rebellion, and singular focus. Okay, how many of you have a singular focus? I know I have at times. Um, and it's hard because we're just all about ourselves, right? We're all about ourselves. We want what we want. We want... Um, we're so focused on ourselves, but really it's not about us, right? So in their stubbornness, rebellion, and singular focus, God narrowed his interaction with them to, mere, um, to merely showing them his wonders. Nice. But Moses enjoyed a more rewarding, fast superior result, a deeper level of int intimacy. God pulled back the veil in a more personal way with him, revealing his personality, his character, and his heart. And this is what Mo Moses valued above all else. Um, listen to his Request. So in Exodus 33, 13, it says, Now if I have indeed found favor with you, please teach me your ways and I will know you. Okay, how many times could we pray that? Teach me your ways so that I can know you. Okay? And then in a little bit down on page 109, you can distinguish God's voice by asking these three questions. Okay? Three questions. Does what I'm hearing show some truth about the character and nature of God as revealed in Scripture? Are all those things lining up? Will obedience to this directive cause me to discover and experience an aspect of God's character? So if you're having trouble deciding who is talking to you, is it your ego, is it the enemy, or is it God? Um, those things have to be lining up. If, if you're confused, then you have to get into Scripture for it to be confirmed who's talking to you, okay? Um, when the enemy speaks to you, or when your ego speaks to you, those voices will distort the character and word of God. Anything that does not reflect the character of God or require you, listen to this, require you to more clearly see and experience Him is not a message from Him because this is His chief aim, to reveal to us that He is the prize, okay? He alone is our prize. Okay, um, day two. We learned, um, and it's titled, He Loves Us. Okay, and I, I could 
speak on that, those three words so much. We're just going to talk about it, you know, we talk about it every day, of course, when we do these, but, but those three words can provide so much peace to someone who's confused. Um, just to know that he loves us is enough. You know what I mean? It's enough. We don't need the next best thing. We have what is enough if we know that he loves us. Okay, um, so I want to talk about condemnation versus conviction. Okay, so that's what we're going to be talking about. Um, 110 through 111. Isaiah 43, 1, I want to read it to you. It says, Now this is what the Lord says, the one who created you, Jacob, and the founder, um, and who formed you, Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. You are his. Never changing. You are his, okay? Isaiah 43, 25 says, I sweep away your transgressions for my own sake and remember your sins no more. He didn't do that for us. He did that for him so that we could have a relationship, okay? How many people do you know are gonna just wipe the slate clean, forget everything that you've ever done to them and just move on and love you as much as they did or more? Okay, that's something to really think about. That takes a lot. For us as human um, in our flesh, that's hard for us to do, to wipe that slate clean. And as many sins as we do on a daily basis, okay, as many sins as Israel was doing, and he just wiped that all clean, sent his son, and, and we're, we're washed white as snow by the blood of Jesus. That's amazing. It's amazing love. If you don't know what love is, that is love, okay? Um, I'm going to read this to you. It was the voice of God telling me he had delivered me from the guilt of my past by showering me with grace and showing me and moving me toward the promise of tomorrow. So that's what Priscilla said. Condemnation is the work of the enemy, okay? Condemnation is the work of the enemy. It means to consider something worthy of punishment. Conviction, okay, so we have condemnation, we have conviction. Conviction is the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay, it means to bring something to light in order to correct it. Okay, so God God doesn't say sin and, and it's fine. He doesn't say that. He's going to convict you. He's going to convict your spirit, the Holy Spirit inside of you, so you know that what you've done is wrong, Right? But you're not going to feel, if you feel guilt and you feel any kind of um, ill feeling in you, that's from the enemy. That's condemnation. That's not conviction, okay? That's not conviction. I don't want you to get that confused because they're two totally different things. Okay, you will know condemnation because it's accompanied by guilt, like I just said, that offers no clear means of relief. The Holy Spirit brings conviction that's always, um, that always provides a roadmap out and away from a specific sin, okay? So with condemnation, there's no hope. With conviction, there's hope. There is a grand result because of what we did, okay? There's not that with condemnation, okay? Um, and, and that's important for you to understand. So the enemy um, had me convinced that... Um, because of my sin, I wasn't deserving of a relationship to work, okay? Um, I was going to be left alone, basically. This is what he had me convinced of, that I was going to be left alone to walk with God um, in this journey that I'm on because I had made a few bad decisions in a relationship that was given to me by him, okay? Um, the enemy was condemning me completely, completely condemning me in in giving me a sense of guilt and um, and just gross feelings about myself, you know? And God was trying to convict me, but I was choosing to listen to the enemy, um, to the condemnation of the enemy, and deem myself unworthy of a successful relationship, okay? And God wants to deliver us from our greatest desires. Um, he wants to deliver our greatest desires to us um, if they are truly like from our heart, you know, we have to understand that 
that if God has put something on our heart, like having a family or um, having a husband or having a significant other or having a certain job or having a new baby, whatever it may be, um, if those are true desires of your heart, God will deliver those to you. But the enemy equally is going to be there every day to, to tear those apart, to tear your peace apart. Okay? So you have, you have all these decisions. You know, you have a decision to make whether you're going to listen to the voice of God or you're going to listen to the enemy. You have, we have a choice we have to make, right? Um, so he, he knows that desire, a committed and Jesus-filled relationship with a man, I believe he will deliver that to me um, in his time, you know? So even though I felt like before I had messed things up, and kind of just like was deemed unworthy of a successful relationship. And I know a lot of you feel that way too. Um, that's not God's plan for us. God can work miracles. He can come in and change the darkest of people. He can come in and change um, the most twisted, turned around relationships. If you allow him to, if you surrender it to him, okay? It has to be a choice that you make that you're seeking him and letting him guide every step of your life. Because if not, the enemy is going to be coming in, fighting you, okay? Fighting you and, and trying to tear it all down because he doesn't want you to have what God wants for you. He doesn't want you to have a successful relationship. He doesn't want you to be happy. He doesn't want you to feel worthy. He doesn't want you to feel loved. He wants you to feel down and out and, and bitter and mad. All of those negative feelings, he wants you to feel that so you can't live out your destiny God has planned for you to, to better his kingdom and his purpose, to live out his purpose, okay? Um, I want to read you something on page 115. So if you want to flip on over to 115, um, condemnation offers only guilt and judgment at its, at its point as it points out the problem. Okay. So condemnation offers only guilt and judgment as it points out the problem, the soothing, listen to these words. Okay. The soothing conviction of God offers a solution. Okay. If you've had something given to you and handed to you by God and you you mess up, okay? You mess up so bad. And you're like, this, you can't reconcile this. You can't fix this. God can, okay? God can, but it has to be a decision you make, okay? You make the decision to seek God instead of the relationship. And God's gonna come in and fix whatever problem you had and, and make it just to the glory of him. Work miracles. I'm telling you, it is incredible the way that God can work, and we only know just a small fragment in our lives, okay? We only know just, just a little bit of what God can do, right? Because I know in my life, I have, in these past four months of my life in this walk, I've had so many miracles happen to me that no other person, no, not myself, not anyone else, not any situation, only God could do, okay? That's why I'm so passionate about what I'm telling you guys is because if it has happened to me, if the miracles have happened to me, it can happen to you, okay? I'm just a normal girl next door, nothing special about me. I'm telling you, I am just as basic as it gets, I'm telling you that if it can happen to me, it can happen to you, okay? So whatever you're going through that you feel cannot be reconciled, can't be fixed, there's just no hope, okay? There's no hope that it could be fixed. I'm here to tell you that with God on your side, anything can be fixed. Anything can happen. Anything. You just have to speak it into existence. Make sure it's lining up with his word. Make sure it's a true desire from God on your heart, okay? And it can happen. You have to speak it though. You have to you have to act like it has already come into play like God's already granted you that promise. Okay?
He said, uh, don't you have great hair and makeup talents? Maybe. But what's really important, you know, what's really important? Okay, let me finish reading this. Um, so the soothing conviction of God offers a solution, right? You will know God's voice because it will bring encouragement, keyword, it will bring encouragement, a solution, um, along with conviction, okay? So just remember that. Remember that this week as you're feeling condemned by the enemy because it's bound to happen, right? It's bound to happen that he sneaks in and tries to ruin um, our peace and our happiness. Um, just remember that that's the enemy, okay? And God has got a plan and a solution and encouragement for you, okay? Um, so day three is titled, Nothing But the Truth. So life can be bizarre and unpredictable, right? We've talked about this a little bit today. Um, people failing us constantly. Environments are just like ever-changing, Um one day you have this job, the next day you have this one. One day this person wants to be this way, and the next day they don't. And it's like, it's just all like up in the air, right? Ever, nothing is ever set in stone, right? Does anyone else feel that way? Does anyone else feel like you can't really trust or rely on anything really um, here in the world? Like people, um, even your parents, even your parents, even your closest friend is bound to fail you at some point, right? Even your husband is bound to fail you at some point. Even the person that said, I'm gonna love you forever, they're bound to fail you at some point, right? Or change their mind, or change their direction. Things are ever changing, okay? So um, we have been fooled so many times, right? Um, that's why we must rely on God's word and his truth to decide our actions. Um, because if we, if we are taking, um, if we're taking initiative to choose a specific action based on a feeling that we have or the way someone else has made us feel or, um, this situation, situation changing, it could be kind of messy. It, it can be not the right thing to do. Okay, so we have to rely on God and his word to guide and direct our steps because our flesh could be telling us one thing, but God's word is saying something totally different, right? It's completely different. Um, so let me read to you on page 116. And this is really important. I want you to really, really listen to the words, okay? Okay. Your feelings, okay, your feelings, past experiences, and personal perceptions cannot be wholly trusted. How you feel right now cannot be trusted. Think of that one thing, that one situation that you're either wanting an answer to, a solution to, something. Okay, you're thinking about it. Think about it right now. Get the person to mind. Get the situation to mind. Get the, the whatever it is. Get it. Get it right in the forefront of your mind, okay? Um, and then your feeling, how you feel about that situation. So I want you to take the situation and how you feel about it, and realize that whatever you do about the situation, you can't rely on that feeling that you just thought about. Okay. So we've separated the two. We're disconnecting it from ourselves. We're disconnecting our feelings from ourself, okay? So our feeling over here, we've got our situation over here. We're disconnecting those. We're going to rely on God's word for the action to the situation. Does that make sense? It's hard to do. It's really, really hard to do, and I've, I haven't mastered it, but it's getting a little bit easier. Disconnecting my feelings from myself, knowing that, that those are, are not what I choose my actions or base my actions upon, okay? Um, so you, you're, the things that have happened to you in your past, um, your parents mistreating you, um, series of rejection, all these things that have happened to us that have caused us to be the way that we are, we have to disconnect ourselves from those things because they don't define us. They don't, they cannot cannot be what we base our actions upon because we're going to be stuck, okay? We're going to be stuck right here, 
where we are right now, we cannot experience growth if we disconnect our feelings and what has happened to us from ourselves, okay? We can't base our actions upon those things. Um, so if you do depend on them, you will likely be deceived by the enemy, okay? So I have had tons of rejection in my life. Um, and continuing, continuing to be rejected, continuing, I mean, not just with men. I'm, I'm talking jobs and all sorts of different things. It, it stems because the devil knows that that is the way to get me through rejection. He, he sees that as my weak point, okay? He sees that that is what makes me insecure and um, feeling not worthy, Okay, he sees that. He sees that before that has worked on me, okay? Before I had a strong faith that has worked on me, constantly being rejected. But I think he's slowly starting to get kind of shaken in his, his boots because my relationship with God is being being so solidified that it's, it's not really bothering me when people are rejecting me. It's not really bothering me that I don't have their validation. It's not really bothering me that they don't like what I'm doing. It's not bothering me that he doesn't want to be with me. It's not bothering me. You know what I mean? So when we are not basing our actions upon our surroundings and the things that are happening to us, the devil has no foothold. He has nothing. He, he can't. He can't withstand in your mind. He can't, he can't plant seeds in your mind if, if, if you know who you are. If, if you know who is the real prize, right? I mean, I mean, it's just, it's amazing. Once you change your mindset, how things don't affect you anymore. How things, I mean, sure, you'll have moments of weakness, but you'll, ki you'll kick back in gear and, and you'll be like, oh, that's the enemy. Okay, like, I'm good. I'm good. Brush it off. I'm good, right? So, to keep from being fooled by the enemy, you must possess an objective standard outside of yourself. So, God's word is that objective standard. You have to be relying on that standard to get through your day, to know who you are, to define yourself, okay, on God's word. And his word alone, like nothing else. Okay? Only what he says. Um, let's see. I'm getting ahead of my notes. So I have notes that I wrote today. Um, I have a few questions that I wanted just to put out there for you to think about. And then we'll move on from there. So have you ever found yourself in a relationship where someone promised you something? Whether it be a parent, um best friend, significant other, husband, whatever. Have you found yourself in a relationship where someone promised you something? They promised they would feel a certain way. They promised forever. They promised they would never change. They would never go anywhere. Um, they promised you to pick you up every weekend when you were a kid, but they never made it. All these things. Do you, do you have that person that you're thinking about? Okay, think about that. Um... They either said they would do something or be something for you. Um, I have had this happen many times. I have had multiple people, tons of people come through my life and say, I'm going to be this for you um, or I'm going to do this for you. Sorry, I have a text message. And um, more times than not, they were never that thing for me. They they couldn't... They couldn't um, Stand up to the plate and be that for me, okay? And that's fine. You can't hold that against them, okay? You cannot hold things against people. But I'm trying to bring light to the situation that um, God is the only thing that promises and is never changing on what he's going to be for you and what he's going to do for you, okay? And we only find out what those things are by reading his word, okay? His word being the Bible, if you're new to faith, okay? Um, Romans 3, 4 says, let God be found true, though every man be found a liar. 
Um, I read that this week. Actually, I read it today, and and it um, it really it kind of made me chuckle a little bit. Like, I don't I don't know why. I'll read it to you again. Let God be found true, though every man be found a liar. <laughs> it, it makes me think about past relationships um, when people are like, people, I only date men, but um, just started following your podcast and I love them. I'm so glad you found it. I'm so glad that, it, that you like it um, and thank you. So I, I start to think about all of the liars, right? I start to think about the guys um, that I've dated that have promised X, Y, and Z and could bless their hearts, they couldn't even get X put together, much less Y and Z. Okay, does that make sense? So, so it's funny to me now because I know that people are always going to fail you. They're always going to have changing feelings. They're always going to have um, all these things. You know what I mean? that will never measure up to what God can do for you and to what, how strong and um, just firm that, that what God is, He is. What He says is. It is the truth. It is the way. It is the life. Um, uh, Robin, I'm with a guy right now I'm not sure of. However, he is the X, Y, and Z when it comes to loyalty and honor. Um... I don't, um, what, how, why are you not sure about him? I, okay, let me, let me tell you this. I was with the guy that was X, Y, and Z, A, B, C, D, all the way through the alphabet. But then he was missing one letter. You know what I mean? And, and that's the letter of being accepting of love because of his past. So, so that is, um, I don't know, you, ha you have to find that one letter that he's missing. What is the letter, and we're talking about the alphabet here, but I'm just trying to, to figure out, um, I don't know. If, if something feels off, just let it go. Take a break, okay? Take a break. Re regain your focus on God and he'll give you the answer to whatever it is that you're trying to figure out, okay? That's the best advice I can give you um, in what I do. That's what I do, Robin. So I hope that helps. I hope that's not confusing. Um, anyway, you can message me and let me know. Red flags are not from God's plan. No, they are not. <laughs> they are not from God's plan at all. Um, God has no deception um, in his character. There's no deception. Um, you say he has anger issues. He's true, yet I'm not sure if his emotions, all the others are lovely, but bad guys. Um, if he has anger issues and is not willing, there are two separate types of anger, I feel like. I feel like there's the anger where they are physically abusive, and I feel like there's the anger where they are emotionally abusive, and I would much rather, um, I don't want to be insensitive when I say this, but I would much rather someone punch me in the face than be emotionally abusive. Of course, I would, I would wish that neither of those would happen, but for me, I know I'm tough enough to withstand a punch or a blow to my body, okay? But if someone emotionally abuses me, I, I can't, I don't know how to come back from that. You know what I mean? It's really hard. It's much harder for me. So if he is being either of those to you, you need to let him go. And if he, if he gets therapy and is, is working to control that anger, he's going to anger management. He's, he is recon, first step is he's recognizing the problem. Okay, if he has acknowledged that he has an issue with anger, that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, I read a really great book, um, The Man God, God Has For You by, what was that guy's name? Stephen something, I have it on my blog, rlcenter.com. Um, I only have 15 minutes, we're only on day three, I gotta hurry. Okay, he acknowledges the problem. You can't fix this person, okay? You cannot put all your energy into this 
and um, and fix him. Do you see what I'm saying? You can, I have tried to fix too many people in my life. You're not capable of doing that. Only God can fix and change people, okay? Only God can make them want to be better, okay? Through conviction. Um, so it's important that you really listen to me when I say from experience, much of it, you cannot fix this person, okay? So therefore, to the, to the degree of his anger, you need to just be a friend I don't know what these hand movements are, but I feel like they're really helping me get my, my point across. Um, you cannot give all of yourself to someone who is emotionally or physically abusing you. You see what I'm saying? With his anger. Because it is. I mean, if he's if he has anger issues and you're in his life, it's probably directly affecting you and causing you negative feelings. Right? Um, so, so you need to disconnect yourself. From the relationship let him get his therapy fix his issues and then you can regain um, the trust and the situation okay so I hope that 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 helps you you can't you can't be in a relationship if it's meant to be it's gonna be okay but he has to acknowledge the problem seek the help and then you can get back in your committed relationship otherwise um, it's probably it's probably a situation where God is trying to reveal himself to you in some sort of way. Um, you probably need to let this person handle their issues. If you're, if you're noticing he has anger issues and it's, it's enough for you to get on here to me and say, my person has anger issues, um, it's probably an issue and you probably want him to figure that out. And you can help him. You can be there for him. You can console him, but you can't be with him. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, put the relationship in God, God's hands and let it work itself out. You know, God will work it out. Don't, don't, don't lose faith because he will work it out, okay, to your benefit. He will work it out if you are seeking him. I hope that that, that gives you a little bit of peace. Um, let's see, where was I? I want to read to you John 16, 13. When he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, okay? You're very welcome. Um, for he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. Um, I want to read to you kind of a scenario that we've probably all been through and we're going to go over tonight, but I I don't mind if you don't mind. Um, I'm going to read this to you, and I want you to um, to just kind of think about if you've ever been in this situation. A lot of us have. Uh, there's like 22 of us in here right now. A lot of us have probably been through this situation. So I'm going to read this to you, and then I'm going to read you a verse, and um, hopefully you can relate to this. So lies, lies, and more lies is what this part is titled. Jordan is a successful, beautiful woman one of the kindest, most considerate people Priscilla has ever known, right? She believes in Jesus and has truly desired to honor him throughout her life. To hear her tell it, this is why she spent much of her life um, suppressing her attraction to other women. Okay, let me say I don't mean that I'm attracted to women and that that's what we relate upon. Just keep listening. You'll, you'll understand what I'm saying in just a minute. Um, a situation that's left her feeling guilty, condemned, judged, and increasingly embittered to the point of being estranged from the church. At age 45, she decided the loneliness she feels cannot be God's will for her. Since the same-sex attractions have only solidified until they feel more and more natural, okay, um, she's concluded this must be God's way of condoning her decision to simply embrace who she is, Okay. She feels good about it now, okay? She's convinced herself that this is the situation, okay? That this, this is how it's going to be because she's comfortable, okay? Based on certain scriptures, she's carefully selected, a.k.a. she's taken completely out of context. Um, she says she's been affirmed that pursuing this path is indeed God's will for her life. What situation have you um, deemed 
your destiny and who you are because you're like throwing your hands up and this is how it is because you're stubborn and um, selfish. Let's just put it that way. Um, and Priscilla con continues on and she says, but could this be true? I know this woman. I know of her faith and belief in Christ. If, only, if the Holy Spirit truly indwells her, how could she be so off base about God's voice? How could she be so wrong, right? We've all been in this position one time or another. Here's where we can relate. Different circumstances, same dilemma, right? We've been certain about an action we plan to take and decision we needed to make. We've based it on deep-rooted emotional responses or solid rationalizations. To us, we thought we were doing the right thing. But as usual, as usual, hindsight tells us differently. The enemy's approach is so cryptic and clever. Listen to what I'm saying. The enemy is so cryptic, so clever, right? That we rarely know he's taking advantage of us in the moment. Okay, I have been on here for an hour already. Y'all know the drill. Go back to my profile. I have to end this live. Start a new one because I've been on here so long. And... Um, and I'll, I'll redo the live. So get out of this live. Go to my profile. I'll go live in just one second. Okay? Hello. <laughs> Hello there. Really, somebody at Instagram or somebody that knows someone at Instagram has to lengthen the amount of time that you're live. Why is there even stipulations on that? I'm not even sure. Okay, I'm going to let the number go up and up and up. And then um, I will continue on with our devotional. Um Okay, we've got about 10 minutes to get through two more days, so let's keep going. If you're if you're new, you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm finishing up um, a live devotional, and you can listen to the beginning of the live, the hour long that we just talked, um, on my podcast, Faithfully Yours. Faithfully is one word, Faithfully Yours, and it's on iTunes and Spotify and SoundCloud. Okay, so I'm going to get to continue on. Um, so the enemy is is so clever and so cryptic, right? He is able to mirror God's voice and will so um, so closely that without a reliable soundboard to evaluate and measure it, we will likely be led astray. Isn't that so true that, um, and kind of scary, it's really scary that I can think I'm so sure about something and then when I get in God's word, he reveals to me I was wrong all along. It's scary, but also important message from that is that we're constantly in God's word, that we are that we are so fulfilled with his word that um, we're, we're constantly searching it that we can be corrected instantly almost. As soon as we get in the word, we can be we can be convicted that that what we've chosen is wrong right? Um, so that's just a kind of a little motivating speech there that, that if you, that if you are constantly in the word, it's, it's more likely for you to choose the right thing. Um, because the enemy, the enemy can't withhold anything within the word, right? That's not his truth. That's God's truth. So I hope that that, that kind of gives you, um, some motivation to, to get, open your Bible, it's on your phone. I mean, it's so easy. If you're at work and you're like, I can't, I can't just open my Bible in front of all these people, but you need a word right then. You need answers, you know, right then. You have it. Just, just scroll on your phone. I read my my Bible, my my tech technical Bible um, is is not with me at all times. It's it sits behind over here on my little um, bar cart. But when I need a word, I just put bust up my phone. I mean. God's made it so easy for us. He's made it. He's dumbed it down so much for us to, to find him. You know, he's meeting us right where we need to be met. 
and I mean, that says a lot about how society is nowadays, but he's meeting us right where we are, right? Through technology and through all these things, Twitter, Facebook, I can't t- tell you how many times I, I hear a message through the people that I follow on Instagram right when I need to hear it. And, and if I would open my phone 10 seconds later, I wouldn't have heard that message. Okay, so God can speak to you um, if you're constantly searching for him, right? That's a whole nother message for a whole different day. Um, day four was titled Peace Patrol, okay? Um, I'm going to read to you on page 123 a little message. I, did I read to you page? No, I didn't read to you this. We didn't read this to you because I went ahead of myself. Um, so we've all been in the situation where we don't know what God's trying to tell us, right? We have no idea. Um, on page 120, I want to read this to you. If I don't feel it or if it doesn't make sense, then to me it isn't true, right? I'm right. I'm justified. She feels justified of being, um, of her situation, right, of being um, homosexual, And that's, you know, no judgment here. I'm just telling you what the book was saying, that she feels justified. She feels justified, so she throws her hands up. And even though it goes against what the Bible says, um, she feels justified. So this is precisely how the enemy sneaks in. Disguised and cloaked in rationalizations and misrepresentations, which in the moment seem easier better, and far more convenient. We live in a world of convenience, right? We think we are right. And we're not willing to put in the work every day to make sure that we stay right, you know? Um, It's just, it's amazing to me. And and I want to ask you, well, Ephesians 6.14 says, Stand therefore with truth like a belt around your waist. Okay, stand in God's word like a belt around your waist withholding you from from the enemy, right? Um, what truth has God given you? I want you to think about um, what you have prayed about and, and an answer you think he has given you, okay? Because we all have that. Hopefully you've prayed about a certain situation and, and God is, at some point in your life has revealed the answer to you. So what truth has God given you? Did he tell you... Um, that someone was sent from him to help you and you choose to believe like doubt from the enemy because that happens all the time. Um, Doubt from the enemy and rationalize it uh, with thinking with false truth uh, you think is from God. So, So God is not going to give you doubt about a situation. Only the enemy, that, that adjective or, or, or that, that, I don't even know. I feel like doubt can be a verb. I feel it. I just feel it. I don't know. It may not be right. I'm just saying that doubt is coming from the enemy. It's never going to come from God. God, that's not his, the fruit of his spirit. It's not going to, he's not going to give you a a feeling of doubt. He's going to give you a feeling of peace, right? So if you're feeling doubt, that's not coming from, from God. That's coming from the enemy. What you choose to do based on that feeling of doubt right? You can act in doubt. You can, you can act, um, you can base your actions upon that doubt, but you need to make sure that if you feel that doubt, that you're in the word constantly being convicted by God that, that it's right or wrong. So before you choose that, you, you really need to, um, pray about it and, and read the word and be in the word. Um, or did you take a job because you felt like it was more money, but God told you it's wrong for you? How many people have probably done that in, in this life, you know? Um, or another situation, maybe God told you that what, that you like needed to help someone, um, but they didn't really fit your criteria, um, in, or of who needs to be helped. I'm specifically talking about the homeless people that sells the newspapers or um, the person that has come to you time and time again and this one time God kind of kind of puts it on your heart a little bit that, okay, this time you should help them, but you go with the doubt that they're not using that money for the right thing or, or whatever it may be, um, and you rationalize why you'd be more comfortable not helping them. 
Um, so God's given you a truth. You've gone with the doubt. And you've based your actions upon that doubt versus the truth that, that you help people always. You give to people always. You know, there's no criteria. You just do it. You do it out of the goodness of your heart. And then, and then God will either con- will convict them if they're using whatever you have, have, have lent to them in, in good spirit. You see what I'm saying? I feel like I'm getting off topic. I just hope that whatever truth um, God God gives to you and puts in your life, that you are constantly in the Word, praying for Him to reveal Himself to you through His Word, so that you can continue to be right. Okay, that His His truth to you can continue to be right. Um, I want to read something to you. Uh, one. 21 and 122 if you have your book just because we feel comfortable doing something doesn't make it right um we must filter it through the truth of god and bring our behavior and attitudes into alignment with that truth not our feelings not how we feel like we were talking about earlier we can't base our actions upon our feelings um his word is truth and when his spirit speaks he will only speak truth Okay, so just remember that. Remember that you cannot base your actions upon how you feel, right? So the enemy is hoping um, you'll think you're smart enough, perceptive enough, savvy enough, experienced enough that you can trust yourself to recognize God's fingerprints and voice quality. He knows that any one of us who gets too big for our spiritual britches And no longer pledges full allegiance to the unchanging standard of God's word can be carried away um, by his craftiness. That's so true. Okay, now we'll go into day four. And um, I have to hurry. I'm sorry. It's 8 o'clock. I know, you guys. I'm already supposed to be finished by now. But um, just bear with me. 15 more minutes. I want to read just a couple of things. Just a couple of things. So day, day four was called... Peace Patrol, um, and I keep one. I keep thinking of that kids' show, Paw Patrol. Um, a strong and consistent sense of internal peace can clue you into the sound of God's voice. Okay, uh, John fourteen twenty seven says, "Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid." Um, that's, that's really, um, it's important to, to not get discouraged and, um, and not doubt your ability to hear God because it's not easy. It's not easy, especially when, when you're constantly living in sin, you know, how do you expect for your muscles to work if you're not working them out? You know, how do you, how do you expect that? Um, it's important that we're constantly exercising um, the truth, right? We're constantly reading the truth. Um, So our hearts won't be troubled and we won't be afraid because we stand firm on God's truth, right? Uh, Page 127, if you have your book. If you're wondering, even by accident, um, because that does happen. It's happened to me a lot. If you're even, if you're wondering, even by accident, out of the path he's set for you, his peace will not rule. Okay. If you're moving forward prematurely ahead of his timing, his peace will not rule. But when he is truly speaking to you on a particular matter, peace will settle deeply within your heart. Wait for his peace to rule. Wait. For God to answer you. Don't act irrationally based on your feelings. Okay? Don't don't have a, a, a loose tongue. Don't have crazy thoughts. Okay? Don't let your thoughts get ahead of you. Get back in the word. Start reading. I don't care where you start reading. God can reveal himself to you in any book of the Bible. Whenever he wants to. Okay, just open it up, open it up, start reading. You don't have to have a specific scripture. You don't have, oh, y'all, that mouse is back. 
for those of you that were here, I think it was, um, oh my gosh, I think it was um, Valentine's. Wasn't it Valentine's that that freaking mouse, oh, it just slid under the door. I'm going to lose my mind. Um, lost my train of thought. We're going to move on to day five. I can't even. I cannot even with the mice. I cannot even. Cannot. Cannot. Okay. Um, so day five is obviously our fifth day. It knew I wasn't in the pineapple room. It needs the word as well. Well, let me tell you. Ugh. I don't even know. I don't know, but I just can't. They're filthy. They're so gross. I can't stand them. But I live on a farm, so what do you expect? You know, when you live in a field, there's going to be field mice. Um, yes. Every time something has to come, I think it's been like a wasp. I think it's been, it's been the mice. And, uh, oh, the other week it was a wasp too. I cannot. It's the devil trying to distract me. And, and I'm not going to fall for it. Not today, Satan. Not today. Um, okay. On page 128, I'm going to read this page to you because it's so spot on. Um, yes, they literally poop everywhere. And I cannot stand it. Um, every week. Okay. Matthew had been married for five years when his relationship with his wife began to struggle. He took his concerns to the Lord and asked him for help, asking God to show him what to do, how to handle this intense, confusing, upsetting time of his young life. Okay, listen because you're going to relate. Perhaps what Matthew really wanted, what many of us have often um, wanted when praying for help, is for God to step in and change his wife's heart to convict her of the ways... Um, she was misunderstanding him, misjudging him, mistreating him, creating all this turmoil and not seeing her own part in it, right? Um, I know y'all are commenting. I can't read them right now. I'll go back through and read them. Um, but while Matthew was spending time in prayer and in scripture, certain verses began to grip his heart, settling with authority into the depths of his being. It gets, it's going to get good. A number of these verses remind him, reminded him of the sacrifice Christ made for his salvation, of the unconditional love God had shown him, of his steadfast, forgiving, undying faithfulness through every season of Matthew's life. The Spirit was speaking, directing this man to begin seeing his wife um, through the Lord's eyes. I love this part. To start thinking and acting toward her with the compassionate patience that God had to that had extended to Matthew. To put God's character traits into practice. To mirror the image of God in his relationship with his wife. He was the one that needed to change, okay? Emerging from this time with the Lord, he noticed a stark change. His wife was the same. His marriage was the same. His various problems at home were the same. But Matthew was surprisingly different. God's voice reflecting God's character had led him to see his wife through a whole new lens. Many dozens of years later, the love and devotion of this couple still testify to the redeeming, transformative power of God's word. Okay? Sometimes it's not the other person that needs to change. Sometimes it's not the situation that needs to change. Sometimes it's us that needs to change. Okay? Um, and, and that's funny because we often want everything all about us except when it comes to changing, right? Um, so just be open to God changing you and, and putting his character traits into action in, into your life and notice all of the changes that will happen around you. It'll, it, sometimes it'll just be overnight and, and you will wake up one day and you will say, thank you. Thank you, God, for changing me that I can see this through a new lens, a new perspective. Okay. And, um, it's incredible the way that God can work. So I was, I finished the book today. I finished, um, day five and then I happened to be going through my notes through when I was reading through Isaiah. And um, I wanted to read these two verses to you guys as encouragement 
um, give you a little direction. So Isaiah 26, 3 through 4 says, You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. So we're going to get peace if we are steadfast by trusting in God. Um, trust in the Lord forever for the Lord the Lord himself is the rock eternal. Okay, so basically um, Israel was a hot mess in Isaiah. And um, I feel like they were for a long time. But um, but he wanted the the people to be so steadfast in, in his truth, you know. Um, and um, it's, it's incredible that, that whole, you know, few sentences how it can just change your perspective. Um, and then Isaiah 31, 20 through 21. Although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity, this is a good one. I want you to listen. I'm going to start over. So in case you weren't listening, you can start listening right now, okay? Um, if you've tuned me out, tune back in for this one verse, okay? Or two verses. Um, Isaiah 31, 20 through 21. Although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will be hidden no more. With your own eyes, you will see them. Whether you turn to the right or turn to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. And I just found um, a lot of comfort and encouragement in those two um two verses right there and I wanted to share them with you and hope that they bring you all sorts of um, encouragement and peace. So I'm only 10 minutes or over and I want you guys to let me know if seven o'clock was a better time for you guys. If this was more, the number went up a little bit by like 10 people. So I'm assuming that um, it is better, but I still want you guys to give me your feedback and I'm going to pray for you guys. And be sure you finish week five for next Wednesday at 7, I got a hair, 7 um, p.m. Central Standard Time. Okay, it allowed for dinner. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay, so we'll just keep doing 7 o'clock and um, hopefully it'll, you know, people will adjust if you missed. Um, it's 9, 10 here. Okay, cool. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, great. I'm going to pray for you guys, and then I'll let you go. Um, if you want to bow your heads, you can. If not, you can just watch me. Um, Lord, thank you so much for your undying love for us, the truth that we can stand so firm on. Um, without you, Lord, we would be nothing. We would be so lost and so broken and 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 never be able to um, to be at peace ultimate peace, Lord. Um, thank you for all of these wonderful people that come each week and listen to your word through this sort of unconventional way, but um, thank you for allowing me to be a vessel to speak to them and hopefully give them um, peace with your word, Lord. I pray that as they go throughout their week, they are so blessed by you and they know that it is you, Lord. They know without a shadow of a doubt that you are the one um, that is blessing them and moving mountains for them and healing them and giving them peace. God, you are, um, you are our real prize. You are the prize, God. And may we never forget it. May we always keep our eyes on you, our focus on you, Lord, that you would be ever present in our lives um, and that we would never stray from you, and that, that any time we felt that we were being led astray by the enemy, you would come in with your word and just take, take total dominance over the situation. And um, thank you for everything you've given us, and um, bless these people throughout their week, and watch over them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Oh, that light is so bright. Um, Yes, Robin, I will pray for you and your relationship. I will pray for your significant other and hope that he um, works things out. If you guys need a prayer, you can always direct message me. I will pray for you. And do week five. I Let's see what week five is even going to be called. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Revealing of his plans. So... Perfect timing, right? Perfect timing. Um, I love you guys so much. Thank you for being here each week. And um, 
allowing me to speak this word to you guys. And I really, truly hope that it is encouraging. I hope that it is changing your life. I hope that you look forward to it. I hope that you share it with your friends and family that if they need something um, to go to, that, that they need something to relate to, that you would share this with them or my podcast with them because we all need encouragement, right? And I hope that it is um, that it is uplifting and I hope that it is something that really inspires you to get back in the Word with God because He's incredible. He's so incredible. And um, you, too, can live an incredible life um, if you just give it over to God and let Him do the work, man, because only He can do it. Only He's got it figured out. We are just, we are nothing without Him. Um, Okay, Yes, y'all have a great week. I'll try to do another live uh, really soon. And if you haven't done my polls on Insta Stories, you can learn a little bit more about me. Um, And if you are new to this, you can listen and catch up. Uh, Faithfully Yours podcast. It's on iTunes and Spotify. I love you guys so much. I will see you next week. Bye.